Yesterday, the Department of Commerce issued a final determination that prohibits Kaspersky Labs and any other companies associated with them from directly or indirectly providing antivirus software and cybersecurity products or services in the United States or to any U.S. person due to the risks that these products pose to U.S. national security. So the United States government is now officially labeling Kaspersky Internet Security and all other variants of their cybersecurity suite as spyware. And I say officially because there's been a lot of debate about whether or not Kaspersky is a spyware tool over the past few years. You might remember back in 2017 when the Department of Homeland Security banned the use of Kaspersky antivirus on federal computers and federal networks because of Kaspersky's alleged ties to Russian intelligence agencies and really the fear that the Russian government could compel Kaspersky to use the antivirus program maliciously as a spying tool. Now, to me, it makes perfect sense for the United States or any other country, for that matter, to avoid using proprietary software that is developed by a rival country in their government networks. And it especially makes sense to ban the use of something like an antivirus tool, which by design has a very high level of access to the systems that they run on. They do analysis of files that are stored on machines and they're reporting their findings in files back to a remote server that is controlled by the antivirus company. Antivirus programs are basically like benevolent rootkits, but when the stakes are as high as a matter of national security, you know, government secrets being stolen, military secrets being stolen, you really shouldn't just blindly trust that the rootkit is always going to be benevolent. Now, at the time of the first Kaspersky ban, I was actually working at Geek Squad, and Kaspersky was one of the antivirus programs that Geek Squad slash Best Buy offered. Um, with their paid tech support program. And you also could just go out and you know buy Kaspersky by yourself without getting tech support. Uh, but anyway, Kaspersky was one of the ones that Best Buy really pushed, right? Because they included it with the tech support. And it was also one that most individual Geek Squad agents at my precinct and other neighboring precincts would recommend to people. Um, now, it kind of depended on what the client was going to be doing with their computer and also the specs of the PC they bought. But generally, out of the three main antiviruses we offered, we would recommend Kaspersky if you wanted to have the best detection rate and, I guess, best overall security, at least on high-end computers. And we would recommend WebRoot for everyone else who had lower spec machines because it used a lot less memory and, you know, I guess it was about 90% as good as Kaspersky. Uh, and as far as the three that went with the tech support program, um, the other was Trend Micro, which we never really recommended because Trend Micro was trash. I think it was great a long time ago, you know, even before I worked at Best Buy. But yeah, during that time, it was trash and I imagine still is. Now, the reason I bring all this up is... Back in 2017, when the federal government banned Kaspersky, or at least banned using it in federal networks, Best Buy decided to pull Kaspersky from their shelves as well, because, you know, this product was in the news, and it's like, hey, if the feds don't want to use it, then I guess a lot of other consumers don't want to use it. You know, I guess Best Buy did an internal assessment and decided that as a company, it was a bad look for them to continue offering it, uh, and an email was sent out to all of the Geek Squad clients that were signed up for tech support that had an ongoing antivirus uh, service because, you know, the tech support service would last for one, two or three years and then you would get an antivirus key that matched that timeline. Um, but anyway, 
An email was sent out to Geek Squad clients telling them that they could bring in their computers if they had Kaspersky or they could call remote tech support to switch over their remaining Kaspersky license to Trend Micro or Webroot. So that Geek Squad email, along with the news coverage of the feds banning Kaspersky, had us very busy that week as our appointment schedule filled up with concerned boomers wanting Best Buy tech support to remove what they thought was Russian spyware on their computers. Now, I can't say for sure whether or not Kaspersky is spyware. I would lean towards yes, simply because it's proprietary. I assume all proprietary software is spyware until proven otherwise. And even then, the moment you update it, code's different. And as long as it's still proprietary, it's still spyware. But the software being made by Russians doesn't make any difference to me. However, I am a little bit interested in uh, Kaspersky, well, and was interested in Kaspersky for a few different reasons. The antivirus I was interested in because back around 2016 and 2017, I was learning offensive security and developing malware that could evade the detection of antivirus. You know, not like black hat hacking, but just testing out malware in a lab and seeing how you go about escalating privileges, evading antivirus, etc. And for me, it was pretty easy to get past most antivirus software out there, uh, which is part of the reason why I think it's a little bit of a joke. Um, and even back then, like a lot of Metasploit payloads, they could evade paid antivirus. So like script kitties were able to do it. But Kaspersky was one antivirus in particular that frustrated me and my friends um, whenever we would play Hacker Man back in our script kitty days. Um, sometimes we would be successful and bypass it. And then that was like a big accomplishment for us. But um, I guess something like my first pen testing lab with premium antivirus that's bought cheaply with an employee discount isn't going to be able to have Kaspersky on the menu anymore. I mean, the ban happened at Best Buy seven years ago, but still, if you were working at some other place where you sell Kaspersky, I guess that's not going to be an option anymore, at least not if you're in the U.S. And speaking of Kaspersky in the U.S., I'm not sure what's going to happen to the Kaspersky Labs office in uh, Massachusetts because... Well, they don't sell the antivirus out of there as far as I know, but obviously they're doing some work there and research to improve the product, which the federal government is now labeling as Russian malware. So I guess jobs there are going to be at risk too. Now, I don't personally use Kaspersky antivirus or really any antivirus for that matter. So I'm not too worried about what's happening to Kaspersky from that perspective, but what I am worried about with Kaspersky not being able to sell their product in the U.S. and, you know, potentially having a bit of a cash flow issue is what is going to happen to their research efforts? Because the research that comes out of Kaspersky Labs has been extremely valuable to the broader InfoSec community, you know, the international InfoSec community. In fact, one of their biggest accomplishments just early this year, at the beginning of this year, was devising a lightweight method of detecting the notorious Pegasus spyware tool on iPhones. And I believe at this point, it's also been forked to work on other devices. Uh, and you know, this is a little bit of a conspiracy theory as for why the United States is coming after Kaspersky so hard. Um, because the NSO group is the private security company that developed Pegasus spyware. And while the US government has supposedly never used Pegasus spyware specifically, they have used other tools that were developed by the Israeli security company. And so maybe the US government wants to try and hurt Kaspersky's ability to detect and mitigate spyware that they might want to deploy in the future. Or maybe they really are just concerned about the Russians spying on U.S. citizens. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Like and share this video to hack the algorithm. And check out my online store, Based.Win, where you can get awesome merch like the Come and Find a T-shirt, the Tie-Dye Tour Tee, and accessories for your phone or laptop. 10% discount store-wide when paying in Monero XMR. Have a great rest of your day.